Hi humans! Have you heard about coil gun? Sounds intriguing, doesn't it? Is this DIY coil gun kit a blast? Or just an overpriced gimmick? Let's find out. It's nice to see an instruction manual. What stands out? A heavy coil and a huge 1000 microfarad capacitor. Let's dive in and focus on the main PCB. The board already has all the necessary markings, and the resistors are grouped with their values labeled. This kit uses only THT components, so, let's begin with resistors. By placing them in their designated spots. We even have one extra resistor of each value. How does this kit work? It's a handheld electromagnetic launcher that uses a coil to generate a powerful magnetic field. When a high voltage pulse is discharged from an impressive 1000 microfarad capacitor, the coil rapidly energizes, creating a magnetic force that pulls a metal projectile through the barrel at high speed. As the projectile reaches the end of the coil, the magnetic field collapses, launching it forward with force. Once the resistors are in place, it's time for diodes. Make sure to follow the correct direction. Moving to transistors. The PCB indicates the proper placement for the transistors. Just align the flat side of each transistor with the markings on the board. Make sure to install inductor in correct order, following colors. Now let's install our massive capacitor, the star of the show. The marking on the PCB indicates where the capacitor's negative pole should be placed. Time to install my favorite part of any project. LEDs! Follow the correct polarity, the longer leg goes to the positive terminal. Let's take care of the main coil. All coil legs should face the input side, while the other side is just for securing it. Do not forget to position the push button in its designated spot on the acrylic sheet before soldering. The same goes for the power switch. Install it first, then solder. Finally, the battery holder. And with that, the soldering is complete. Now peeling off the protective film from the acrylic parts. And I start putting everything together, and realize the main coil should have been installed on its acrylic mount before soldering it. Oops! Easy fix! With everything assembled, it's time to power it up. The green LED lights up. After 15 seconds, the blue LED lights up, indicating 50% charge. However, I waited a full minute, but the red LED, which indicates 100% charge, never turned on. Checking the LED in assembly. Everything looks fine. Time to check the manual and, and there is a note, the red light may not turn on. Weird, but why? Because of the flaw of this project, D2 is a 5.1 volts Zener diode and, in voltage regulation mode, is correctly placed reverse biased, allowing it to conduct when the voltage exceeds its breakdown point. However, the circuit's rated voltage is only 3 volts, meaning D2 will never reach its 5.1 volts breakdown point. So will remain non-conductive, and it's completely useless. If a 3 volts Zener diode had been used, it would have worked. The ultimate test! Will it fire? I test it on an empty soda can. Nice! 
But can it actually do some damage? Will it make a hole in paper? No, will it at least tear a tissue? No, it just bends it. What if I shoot my hand? Not painful at all. So not gonna lie, this was fun, but is it practical? Absolutely not. Can it cause damage? Really not. Will I try to modify it? Oh, you bet I will. I already have a few ideas in mind. What's next? Subscribe and see.